What's going on guys? Hip Pause here with a quick tip for UE4 uh, importing meshes. Um, what you're seeing here is actually UDK and I want to point out a very particular mesh that I've got here. Now this has happened to me on many others but um, just this is a good example because uh, it's right here. If we take a look at this kitchen counter door here. Um, you'll notice that it's actually fine like it works okay. Um, we might have a little bit of issues here and there where I screwed things up, but other than that, there's nothing really wrong with the mesh. However, if I take a look at the same mesh in UE4, you'll notice that there's a huge portion of it missing. Um, and the question is, the fuck? Right? So the answer is that this mesh um, is not triangulated. Uh, and what it's doing is when we take this to an FBX, it retriangulates shit for us. Uh, you'll, the reason that it didn't do that in UDK is because I never exported this as an FBX. I actually did it as an ASE file, right? So if we look at the, the max file for just the door itself here, you can see how it's triangulated. Now this, like I said, originally imported into UDK just fine, but it doesn't work in UE4. Um, this section's okay, but this whole segment right here is completely missing because it doesn't know how to retriangulate it. So when this happens to you, basically, you have to triangulate it yourself. Um, I think there's some options in the FBX exporter that can get, that, that can tell it not to retriangulate stuff uh, automatically for you, but for the most part, like we don't really need to f with that. Um, so remember that I don't know if you guys noticed it, but there was a part on the mesh that was jacked up, and that's right here. So I'm just gonna give that a quick quick fix. And the easiest way to do that actually is just to copy this guy's Y position. So let's double click that and copy, and then we shall paste you. All right. So I'm going to retriangulate this thing as quickly as I possibly can, and I'm going to kind of do this in stages, um, just to see um, at what point does this thing actually break. Now I know this part right here is fine, so I'm not really going to mess with this too much. I, I don't really need to, but if I if this part was broken too, I would just basically do this so that I was forcing how it was retriangulating, and I would also take this down to here. Let's just take a quick peek. Okay, so this part up here was messed up. So let's see if a single connection right there is actually going to solve our problem. It may, it very well may. And it certainly did. That is all it needed. Um, now I most likely have some UV issues. Yeah, I got some stretching going on right down that line right there. But see that everything is now solid. I don't have any missing faces, right? There's none of them that are missing. So let's do a quick test on a new object here. I don't really care what I'm making. I do, however, and we should be good. Just like that. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to boolean out. So we'll make a compound object. Okay, there we go. Pick up our MB. Okie dokie. This may actually import just fine because we have this connection right here. But I'm really uncertain about it, so let's just throw a test out there. And we'll see. So see this right here? Triangulate. Um, we're going to leave that unchecked. Now you're going to see right here, it doesn't support the following object's geometry type, and it's going to convert to an editable poly. Now the reason that it's saying that which is actually um, really not a, it's just a warning, it's not, it's not an error. 
Um, when it says that, it just usually means like you're exporting a box or something, and it's like, hey, I don't know what a box is. I'm gonna just make that a mesh. So the fact, the the reason it came up is because this was still set to boolean. So if I were to export again as test, uh, we should not get that error. Ah, oh, we did. To turned edges. Ah, interesting. So the FBX plugin has detected turn edges. If you wish to retain edge orientation, you will need to enable the preserve edge orientation option. Okay. So let's take a look at that and let's see if that's actually enabled. Preserve edge orientation. Not checked. So let's give it a let's give it an export and give it a test. Oh well, I guess I've already exported it. So let's give it a test really quick. Damn it. Dang it. Okay. So test right here. And we'll bring it in. And let's see, are we okay? Nope, we're completely effed. See that? It's completely screwed. Bottom and top. Cannot figure out what to do with those faces, so it just emits them. Triangles 44. Let's see if that matches. Uh, we can test that here by going to statistics and saying triangle count, total plus selection. Um, tries, we actually have 88. Let's see if it's 44 running down this line. 44. So when it it actually deleted these, these are gone. Like they they weren't actually set. So let's take another look really quick at that option and see if that fixes it. If not, we have to re-triangulate it. So I'm just kind of the the reason that I like I haven't already solved this is because it just came up and I'm like you know what I need to address this because this is weird. Um, and I just want to make sure that I have a perfect handle on what's going on. So we'll re-import it. And ta-da! So we want that checked permanently. So if you don't have that checked, you're, if your mesh is coming in with missing faces, um, that could be definitely a solution for you. Now, however, you may not be using a program that has that option in your FBX. Okay? Let's address that case. Maybe you're using, I don't know, some app, whatever it is. I don't, I don't know anything about any other apps, and I, and I, I don't badmouth them. Um, I don't use anything but Max, but I don't badmouth, you know, Maya, Blender, Softimage, Cinema 4D, or Rhino, or any of that stuff. If you guys like that stuff, bam, that's what you use, right? So what I would do in that in the case if if you guys don't have the preserve edge option thingy, which I'm kind of assuming that you would because it's an FBX thing, um, we're just gonna take take a look at this really quick, and we'll uncheck that, and so that we're back to you know the basic standard. And we will try that again. I kind of wish it didn't reset my camera. Yeah, see, that fixes it as well. So now, you know, because I've triangulated it, it knows what to do. And you'll notice that it's not actually broken. Because tri triangle um, orientation is very important in 3D. If, if you're very new to 3D, uh, this is something that you need to get a handle on as quickly as you possibly can. Because... Um, what you'll see here is I have this polygon, right? It's a single polygon. However, it's actually six triangles. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, and there's a sixth one somewhere. So let's find out where that is. The easiest way to do it if you're in editable poly is to just go to the turn option. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So what we can do is we can say, okay, well, let me keep it like that. So we need. There we, there we, here we have three, and then here we have three, right? So what happens if I take this one and I flip it? Broken, 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 right? Totally broken. Let's see how that exports. It's actually retriangulated it. You see that? What I broke on the mesh is not broken here because the FBX exporter actually saw that that was like that and it fixed it. So if you're having issues with your faces being missing, um, most likely 
well, not most likely, definitely it is a triangulation issue, and that's what you just need to fix. And the, uh, for me, the easiest thing to do would just be, in my case, just to run a connect manually here uh, if it, you know, if I needed to go this far. But for the most part, as long as you attach corners, you should you should be okay. In a at least in a case like this, okay, where it's just a cylinder that was cut out of a thing. I probably also have extra verts. No, actually, I shouldn't have extra verts because I didn't have extra edges when I did a boolean. But let's take a look at what happens if I uh, if I look at all the the verts here. How many of these things actually need to be welded? None. Okay, so none. So the boolean was clean, but that was because I used two clean pieces of geometry to start out with. So what happens if I don't? This is not clean geometry. Okay, let's run a boolean. Okay, the operation was a success it did work but let's take a look at what kind of verts we have notice around some of these this guy this guy these two these two so why are these here what what happened well what happened is when it did the operation, it, cro it, it made a cross section at every major junction point, right? It's, it actually went in and said, okay, um, I got an edge right here that's going across. It's a hard edge. It's defined, right? Uh, and I also have an edge from where my cylinder is intersecting that. So I need to put a vert there to fix that. Notice at the bottom, at the base, we have no extra verts none whatsoever and the reason for that is because this was just empty volume and all we did was just transfer the verts and the faces from the cylinder to the uh, cube so when you understand how um, booleans and things like that work you can really take care of your edge turning and uh, make sure that everything's clean so in this case what would I do well I would just manually fix it I would want that there and that there I would want that there, I would want that probably there, that probably there, um, this one there, this one there, this one there, and this. Now what I would do, it personally this is what I always do, is I just hit this and just check for anything that's crazy. For instance, this edge right here is not crazy, but it's not optimal. The one thing you want to avoid as much as possible whenever you're making a 3D model is super long, super thin triangles. Um, they cause lighting errors like perpetually. So what you want to do is you want to even those out as much as possible. So in this case, I would take this edge, which you notice I have a very thin triangle right here. Kind of hard to, to, to show that. I'm going to try to use my space mouse so I can fly around it. Um, I cannot select this as a separate polygon because it's not a separate polygon. But you can see right in between here how long and thin that triangle is versus most of the others. Here's another one that's really bad. So to fix this, to make sure that my lighting is clean, I would turn this one. But in this case, I'm effed, right? I can't turn this one because it's going to flip it this way. Because remember, whenever you turn uh, a diagonal on, a, on any kind of quad, you are basically flipping the points. So in this case, what I actually need to do is I need to fix the things around it before I can edit it itself. So what I need to do is I actually need to take this edge right here and back it out. Okay, and then what I can do now is I can flip that one, that one, then that one. Well, I wouldn't do that one, but or this one. See how that's not good? See, this right here, if there's if you have a choice, go with the one that makes the fattest triangles. Just think of it like that, the fat triangles. In this case I would send that there, that there, probably that there. And I'd probably leave it like that because if this one's a little shorter, but if I take it this way, I got a really long one right here, which I can avoid, right? These, I can't really avoid it because what it's going to do is it's going to flip this to this point here. It's going to want to take it from this point to this point. And it's going to give me, it's going to cross over right there. Bam. You see that? That's not good. So in this case, you know, again, right here too, I can't send this one this way because this is further to the right than its other corner so it'll crisscross and I got to avoid that 
right? So there's just a couple of hints. If you guys are having issues with the way that your models are lighting or coming coming out like Scheibsberg, you know, for some weird reason, and if I take this into UE4, it should look, it should look fine. It might have issues. Um, we may have some missing shit around here, and we may have this piece missing here. Let's just take a look. Nope, it figured it out pretty nicely. Okay. Pretty nicely. It's working just fine. So hopefully that helps you guys if you guys are having issues with your models. Um, and things are just like missing, or the lighting just looks like dog shit, and you can't figure it out why. Um, then try try to take a look at your triangulation on your mesh and see see if any of the you know the tools can help you um, you know set that. Uh, sometimes there's nothing you can do um, where you can't you cannot avoid a long triangle. It's just impossible. Like in this case right here, I can't avoid this one. There's nothing I can do. The only way to avoid this right here, this super long one right here, is to actually make a connection right here and once I do that now I can actually I'll just do it with the hard edges here you can see that I can send this this way okay and I would actually send probably well no I don't think I'd send that one that way I think I'd just keep that one this way but I would want to check this edge here and just I would just what I do is I just flip flop them and see which one's thinner and I go for the fatter one in this case I'd probably go with this one right there Okay. In this case right here, I got a really long thin one. I no need for that. I can make it short and fat. And that's what we want. We want short and fat. It's just like real life. So let's see. Okay, so we're gonna fix that right there, and that's it. That would be all I would really really need to do to pretty much fix this. The bottom looks okay, except I got an edge or a face right there that I don't need. I got this one right here that's bad. Okay, this one's could be much better this way. However, I still have a bunch of edges on the base, just like I did on the top, that are extra. Uh, the best way to, to do that is to look at the verts, because it usually looks like it's thicker, like a batter vert when they're really close together. And then you can always hit Control A and just weld with a pretty low tolerance. And you can see in my case before and after are the same so there's nothing wrong with the model now it's perfectly fine so there you guys go hopefully that helped you guys with these tips and if not let me know if you are having issues with anything in particular let me know um, I am busy right now working on getting the um, by the way I did fix that there because it was an extra vert ran down the middle so let's pull that down that's fine now so there we go. Hit pause signing off. Thanks for watching.